Hi everyone, Mary here, and this time we are going to talk about torque and center of gravity. So here goes. Torque is defined as a force applied perpendicular to a lever arm. The equation for torque um, is torque equals force times lever arm. Now the Greek letter tau is what we typically write down for torque. And torque causes rotation. So if here's some sort of a pivot and I apply a force F at some distance, lever arm L, that will cause this whole system to pivot or rotate. And that is a torque. Torques are measured in either the metric units of Newton meters or the English units of foot pounds. Um, those of you who have ever worked with a torque wrench, torque wrenches are typically the English ones are foot pounds and the metric are Newton meters. Force and Newton's lever arm, of course, in meters. Some textbooks, instead of L for lever arm, are going to use R for radius of rotation, just so you are aware, depending upon what book you're working with. Now, I mentioned that torques cause rotation. Here's, here's how it works. Um, if this blue box happens to represent a tabletop, let's say that the gray box up here is a, uh, a book of some sort. As long as I have that book sitting on top of the table, nothing's going to happen. That book is just going to sit there. The center of mass, which is the, the one place where the force can act, as long as it is over the table and being supported, it's going to sit there and nothing's going to happen. But if I gently and slowly scooch the book or the pad of paper off the edge of the table so that the center of gravity is now past the edge of support, what happens is this. The CG, center of gravity, is the one spot where the force vector, the force of gravity vector, can act. That's going to produce a force down. My lever arm is the displacement from that force vector back to the point of, of support. And now I've got a torque. Force times lever arm is going to make this whole system rotate. Newton's second law applied to rotating bodies basically says that a net or an unbalanced torque is required to change the rate at which something rotates. So if you've got an object that's not rotating, you're going to have to apply some sort of a torque to make it rotate or to make it change its rate of rotation, speed up or slow down. Now this scooching something off the edge of the table, um, I highly encourage you to hit pause and try that. You know, you don't want to scooch anything that might break or have it land on your toe, but it's kind of cool. You just get it to the right spot and pew, and it tips over and it doesn't just fall, it rotates as it falls. When we start doing math with torque, only the force that is perpendicular to the lever arm is used to calculate that torque. So if this is my lever arm, this is my pivot or fulcrum, and this is the applied force, I only want the component of the force that is perpendicular, a 90 degree angle, to that lever arm. That's the only part or fraction of that force that's used to actually calculate torque. So it's going to be the force that's perpendicular to that lever arm is what we use to calculate. Now we measure the lever arm from the pivot point or the fulcrum. So in this case where we have an old-fashioned teeter-totter, um, the lever arm for each one of these people who are teeter-tottering, the lever arm is going to be from their center of gravity to the pivot, and for the second person, the fulcrum or lever arm distance is going to be from this person's center of gravity to the pivot. Here I've got a door that is hinged and can open or close, so this is the point of rotation. A, the, the lever arm for A is almost zero. It's going to be very, very difficult to open the door when you're so close to the lever arm. You're going to have almost no torque. But B, here's going to be my force applied, and there is my lever arm from there back to my hinge. By convention, when we're dealing with torque, clockwise torques are considered negative torques, and counterclockwise torques are considered positive torques. This is, if you're going to communicate with the entire rest of the mathematical problem-solving world, that's the way it works. And it goes back to our old friend's math. Um, X, Y axis 
And if you have something that goes in the counterclockwise direction from x up to y, that is considered a positive change in torque. And that's why you have this counterclockwiseness being considered a positive torque and the clockwiseness being considered a negative torque. Let's do a math problem. Now, Scotty is changing a spark plug on the Starship Enterprise. The manual specifies that it be tightened to a torque of 45 newton meters. Scotty holds the wrench so that the force is exerted at an angle of 30 degrees compared to the wrench. If the wrench is 28 centimeters long, how much force must Scotty exert? So from the center of my force to the other end, and let's imagine right here we've got a little bolt that Scotty is tightening, that's going to be my lever arm. So my lever arm is going to be my 60, excuse me, 28 centimeters. And you and I both know we better not just leave them in centimeters, might as well convert immediately. So that's going to be 0.28, and I do have one more sig fig there, so 0 0.280 meters. The bolt is supposed to be tightened to a torque of 45 newton meters, and we want to know how much force does Scotty have to apply. Well, I can do the math and get the force, but he has to then supply it with his hand. So this is going to be a two-step problem. The force that he has to use to actually do this, if torque is force perpendicular to lever arm, then the force is going to be the torque divided by the lever arm, 450 newton meters divided by 0 0.280 meters, and the torque is going to end up being 161 newtons. Now, if this is the lever arm, that's the, the wrench itself, and the force is applied at an angle of 30 degrees to that lever arm or to that wrench, I only want the perpendicular component of this force vector to contribute to this force. So what I just found here was the applied force must be 161 newtons. So that means this perpendicular component has to be 161 newtons. What I want to know is what does Scotty have to exert with his hand. So this is my hypotenuse. That's what I want to find, the true force hand force. If this is 30 degrees, that's going to be 60. I'm going to make a right triangle out of this. The 160 is my adjacent side. My force applied is my hypotenuse. And I want to find my hypotenuse. So using adjacent and hypotenuse, I'm going to go back to cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse or hypotenuse is going to be adjacent divided by cosine or 161 newtons divided by the cosine of 60 degrees because I'm going to use this triangle so that's my angle I'm using and the actual hand force he has to exert when I do the math is 186 newtons and why is this a bigger number than what is required because his hand is not perpendicular. There is that extra 30 degree angle right here, and that means he has to exert more force because of the weird angle. Sometimes things are complicated on the Starship Enterprise. All right, you guys, we will see you next time. Bye-bye.